Amen. Uh, thank you, Joseph, again for playing that song. I've asked Joseph, even though that is a song for Christmas, we, I love the message of that song, and it, uh, it grips my heart. <clears throat> so grateful for the cross. I'm so grateful for Christ, who gave himself for us, the unfaithful, those, all of us, <laughs> We could not save ourselves. We could do nothing in and of ourselves to save ourselves. And uh, Christ went to the cross for us. <clears throat> Either I'm getting fat or my pockets are too bulky. <laughs> I'm getting fat. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> All right, it's 10 after, and so, um, oh, thank you. Do I have stuff hanging? <laughs> thank you. Ain't nothing wrong with crying, amen? amen? Especially when God gets a hold of your heart and he squeezes the juices out and it comes out your eyes. I know he was going to get me a water, but I already have one, so. Thank you, Bill. I got one. Thank you, though. If you're a guest here, thank you for coming. We're glad that you're here. And uh, today I'm in a third sermon on our series, It's Time for Change, and I'm talking to husbands today. So before I get into the message, wives, what I need you to do, a couple of things. First of all, right now, I need you to give your husband the notes and your pen. Go ahead. I'll wait. Husbands, this message is for you today. And so it's your turn to take the notes for once in a whole year. So you got your notes, you got your pen. Now, men, if you'll take these notes home with you, fill in the blanks today. And I'm going to talk real slow. And I'll probably say a few things two or three times. Because I know men need to hear things slowly. And we needed it repeated three or four times. I know this because I are one. Secondly is, I'm hearing a lot of amens. Now, ladies, I'm going to say some things, and you're going to want to go amen to your spouse. Just remember, in three weeks, it's your turn. <laughs> now, this, <laughs> this is the only time where it can become a spiritual fight. <laughs> But seriously, um, I pray, men, that you will be taking the notes today, and I pray that you will be listening because we will be speaking on being godly husbands. I want to read from Ephesians chapter number 5, so turn in your Bibles there this morning. Ephesians 5, I do have a lot to say. I'll try not to keep you long, but what I have to say I believe is very, very important, and any time we're using God's Word or speaking God's Word, should I say, we must, must listen, and we must take the time to listen to what God has for us. Ephesians chapter number 5, familiar, as most of you already know where I'm going. Verse number 25, as Paul speaks to husbands and wives, he says, Husbands, in verse 25, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife 
as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Let's pray. Father, a deep subject tonight, uh, this morning, God, something that is very hard even for myself to preach on because I'm a husband. And Father, many of the things that I must say today, I speak to myself. God, many times I often feel like a hypocrite even to even speak on the things that I'm speaking on because, Father, I failed in so many areas. And yet, Father, through your grace, you are turning me into the godly husband and what you've called me to be, and not just me, but the men that are here today. And I know, Father, I could probably speak openly and honestly for all of the men here today that we've all failed. We've all stumbled, we've all made mistakes, and we've all, probably in one or two of the points that I'm going to mention today, we've all slid. And Father, but your grace is sufficient, and God, we are a work in progress, and God, I'm praying that you'll continue to work on us. God, I'm praying that your Holy Spirit would continue to fill us and change us and transform us. I pray that we'll be sensitive to your word and to your calling to us as godly men. May we not allow our past failures to define us or to lead us or to keep us where we were, but God, may your grace and your love compel us to be better. May we strive, may we pursue the wives whom you have given us. May we, as Paul said, and I will be speaking on honor and cherish and nourish and love. God, help us as husbands to be the godly men in which you have called us to be, that this world, this culture that we live in, will see what a man is that truly loves his wife, what a man is who truly respects her and honors her. May we be those men, that shining light of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lives. For when we are loving our wives, we are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. For Jesus, you loved the church. and You gave yourself for her. And when we love our wives and we give ourselves for her, we are proclaiming the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for this time. I ask now, God, for your help. Please, God, fill me with your spirit. Don't let me preach from the flesh, but God, only from your word. May you be honored and glorified. May all the men this morning look to you. I pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Um, am I static keying? Is it, am I moving this? Okay. We probably need to buy a new mic. So if y'all haven't noticed, we, some of y'all don't know, but we just bought a brand new soundboard for the first time in 15 years. We've never had a soundboard that we paid for. Everything we've gotten has been given to us. And so we finally bought a brand new soundboard. The one we had was so old and the lines were all busted and some of the cords were no good. And so we were able to get some wireless mics and all that. And so God has blessed us to be able to do that. So first time as a church, we were able to buy a sound system. And so if you noticed some of the words and things, we're trying to get used to everything. So it's a little bit different this morning. So, but anyways, um, we're grateful for that. So I don't know if that was probably the mic with the new system. I'm static up. So anyways, let's get on to the message of this morning. I want you to know that, first of all, that I love to be married. I love to be married. How many of you love to be married? How many would love to be married? Okay. <laughs> I love being married, and I love being married to the woman God has given me. There's only one other woman, I have to admit, and I have, must confess my wife, I've been in love with another woman since I've been married to my wife, and that was my mother. Okay, that was supposed to be a joke, but because I know everybody's going like, what? <laughs> Pastor. So, but I love being married to my wife. I love being married to the woman God has given me. And we celebrate this year. Is my wife in here? No, she's in nursery. I think it's 32 years. Corey, is that right? 
That's my son. <laughs> How old are you? 30, we're 32 years this year. Okay, 32 years and a couple of months. We'll be celebrating 32 years. And I love being married. Being married is a beautiful thing, and it's an awesome blessing. But as we all know, for those of you that have, are married, you know that marriage has its ups and downs. Amen? There are seasons where it's more ups than downs, and then there are seasons where it's more downs than ups. Right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can anybody relate? Yes. In those times where it's more downs than ups, what's the problem? Or more importantly, should I say, who's the problem? <laughs> right? He's always the outspoken one. Who is the problem? Well, who's the problem in our marriage? Is it the husband or is it the wife? Well, if we're all going to be honest, the finger should point to ourselves, right? Because it takes two to be married. Both wives and husbands both are the cause of having more downs than ups in their marriage. So in order to change that around uh, so that we can experience more ups than downs, we both need to make a choice, and that choice is to change. That choice is to change. It's time to make a change, and it starts with me. And so, guys, today I'm going to speak to you as husbands. I'm going to try to challenge you to be the godly man in whom God has called you to be. And let me start by saying the challenge and the charge. Men, we need to be the godly husbands God has called us to be. Now, here's the thing. Being a godly husband isn't easy. It's hard, very hard. It's going to take effort on your part. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take sacrifice to become the godly husband you were meant to be. So with that, what is a godly husband? Now, we would all agree, as Paul said, first and foremost, a godly husband is one who loves his wife, right? Paul said in verse number 25, husbands, love your wives. We are commanded to love our wives. But what does this really mean to love our wives? I mean, truly, what does that mean? Because loving your wife is far more than just having an emotional feeling. It's far more than, than having that feeling towards your wife of love. And, and we all have that. Amen, men? All right, all the men, you better help me. Because I'm trying to help you help yourself when you get home. So when I say things like, we love our wives, you are hearty. Amen, preacher. Right? Okay. Trying to help you. Because <laughs> the wives are going, my husband didn't say amen. <laughs> it's more than loving your wife verbally. Loving our wives is really an action. Loving our wives as a godly husband is truly an action. Let me give you five ways in which you are to love your wife as a godly husband. Number one, a godly husband loves his wife by giving himself up for her. Notice Paul says in our text, verse 25, husbands love your wives. How? Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Notice how Jesus loved the church. How did he do it? He loved the church by giving himself in death for her. He sacrificed himself for her. He gave himself up for her. Now, I know that all of us husbands will give our lives for our wives if they are in danger or if their life is threatened. Amen? We have no problem with that. We are strong and courageous, and we will stand in the way of danger for our wives. But here's the big question I be believe that Paul is getting to. Are you willing to give yourself for her greater good? Are you willing to give yourself up for her greater a good. A godly husband is one who dies to self for his wife, who gives himself up for her. This is what's called a sacrificial love. 
Jesus sacrificed himself. He gave himself in death for who? The church. Why? Verse 26, that he might sanctify our better good, sanctify us, that he might cleanse us with the washing of water by the word, that he might present us to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Christ sacrificed himself. He gave himself up for our better good. So what does that mean for us to be sacrificial men? This means putting your wife first before yourself. Putting your wife first before yourself. This means putting her above your needs and your desires. You see, we make those sacrifices in love for our wives when we want to do something as men really badly like I don't know, go hunting or go golfing when it gets warmer, (laughs) right? Or go, I don't know, some of y'all shoot, do shooting um, guns, things. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of what that's called, but uh, there's a name for it. Um, uh, And it's now just lost my mind. It's things that we as men love to do, but we know that our wives need attention. We know that our wives need something. And so a sacrifice is not living to please yourself, but living to please your wife. It's putting her first before yourself. Now, one of the mistakes that husbands make in loving their wives and that they, they like for instance, I've had several men, husbands and wives, should I say, in my office and um, in counseling sessions and and I've had this said to me, and they say, Pastor, um, I understand what you're saying, and, and I will love my wife the way I'm supposed to love my wife, but here's the deal. I'll love my wife when she starts. Right? Maybe you've been guilty of saying that or thinking that. I'll love my wife when she starts. Let me ask you a question. When you look at Christ, let me ask you a question. Did Jesus love the church in response to her actions or what she had done for him? Or did Jesus love the church in spite of what she did? In spite of, right? Jesus didn't love us first because of what we did. Jesus loved us because that's who he is. We don't love our wives because of any condition on which they meet. We love our wives based on no conditions. Why? Because Jesus loved the church based on no conditions. Does Jesus love you based on what you do or based on who he is? Think about this. Jesus chose to love you. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. First John 4.10, in this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, Christ chose to love us. God chose to love us and we choose to love our wives. We must love our wives. So we love our wives not based on any condition, but on the commandment that we are given. Husbands, love your wives also as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for. Number two, a godly husband loves his wife by caring for her. Notice in our text, verse number 28. Notice Paul says, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. What does the Lord do for the church? He nourishes and cherishes it. Now think about those two words, nourish and cherish. In the Greek, they means this. The word nourish means adequate nourishment. It means to provide food for with the implication of a considerable period of time and the food being that adequate to be cared for or adequate nourishment. The word cherish means to take care of or with the implication of cherishing and having a concern for. Now, we nourish and cherishing our wives by several ways. Number one, not a lot of y'all are fanning. Is it hot in here? Or am I just preaching too hard? 
I'm just kidding. Maybe we need to turn the heat down or how do you say it? Down or up, whichever, where the fans kick on. Maybe somebody can tune those on. I feel comfortable. It's great. It could be 100 degrees. I don't care. I love the heat. Amen. Maybe not. But I do. A couple of ways, guys, in which we nourish and cherish our wives. First of all, by making sure that they are well fed. By making sure they are well fed in three areas. Number one, physically. Making sure that our wives are well fed. Hey, guys, did you know that as a husband, do you know it's our responsibility, our responsibility to make sure our family is fed? Amen. Amen. It's not your wife's responsibility. It is your responsibility to make sure you are the provider for your home. Now, there's nothing wrong. Some women work, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the first priority ought to be yours. We ought to provide for them by working to provide for them physically. And by the way, when it comes to providing for your wife physically, did you know it's biblical? Men, that you must provide for your wife's coffee every morning. It's found in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Now, Bill Thompson gave me that one this morning, so I had to use it. So thank you, Bill. I thought it was good. (laughs) But seriously, two more things real quick, and that is we nourish and cherish our wives by making sure they are well-fed mentally. Let me ask you something, guys. Does your wife have hobbies or activities that allows her to unwind? You know, we men have different things that we like to do to to try to relax. Like some guys are woodworking. Some guys like to work on cars. Some guys like to go walk in the woods. Some guys like to carve. Some guys like to just, you know, do different things. We all have different things that we just maybe go out in the garage and just kind of piddle around in our man cave, right? And we do that to try to, not to try, but it satisfies us mentally. Let me ask you something, guys. Does your wife have any activities or hobbies that allows her to unwind? You must provide for her that she has the time to go do those things. That's where the ladies would say amen. Go getting their nails done. Having pedicures. Having their hair done. And whatever else you women do. (laughs) That's all I could think of. (laughs) But finally and thirdly, and this one's really important, we must provide for our families, for our wives spiritually. Spiritually. Making sure they are well-fed spiritually. What does that mean? That means making sure that your wife is fed spiritually. How, How do you do that? By first and foremost, you be the spiritual leader in your home by bringing your family to church. By leading in prayer at home, grabbing her hand and grabbing the kids and saying, let's pray. It's by allowing her to attend Bible studies. You watch the kids and allow her to go do Bible studies. It's you staying home and watching the kids while she gets together with the women that they can go pray and fellowship and and enjoy as iron sharpens iron one another. Amen. It's quiet in here, so... We nourish and cherish our wives not only by making sure they're well-fed, but also by making sure they are encouraged, guys. By building them up and not tearing them down. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Guys, are you nourishing and cherishing your wife? A godly husband is looking for these things. Now, here's the thing. You're going to take these notes home and you're going to keep these notes. And if you don't, your wife's going to keep them for you. And you don't want your wife to go, remember this? Wives don't do that, okay? (laughs) But you're going to want to use this. This will help you, okay? Number three, real quick. A godly husband loves his wife by being faithful to her. Notice in our text also, he goes on to say in verse 28, So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Notice verse 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 
When God designed marriage, he meant it to be between one man and one woman who comes together in holy matrimony to become one flesh, one life forever. But in order for that to happen, you must remain faithful. Jesus was faithful to his church or is faithful to his church. Matthew 28 When Jesus gave the great commission, he said, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. How long? Hebrews 13, 5, let your conduct be without covetousness, but be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Godly men, we need to be faithful to our wives faithful to our wives. Unfortunately, we live in a culture, well, we've always lived in a culture that has influenced us not to be faithful. Let me just give you three of them. Three things that you must be aware of or must be wary of, I hope I'm saying that right, of bad influences in your life. One is ungodly friends. Listen, guys, you know this as well as I do. I'm preaching to the choir here. Guys, you know that ungodly friends don't help you in any area of life. I've been around them. I was once one. And I remember promoting when guys were married and you'd say stupid things like, well, just because you're on a diet doesn't mean you can't look at the menu. Ha, 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 ha. Right? Ungodly friends promote promiscuous promiscuity, excuse me. Ungodly friends promote to be unfaithful. I've had, listen, I've had people today say to me, honest to God, I've had people say, when I tell them I've been married, well, be now 32, but this is, I remember when we were married, when we celebrated our 30th year anniversary, I've had guys say, To the same woman? Yes, to the same woman. Now, (laughs) that was my (laughs) mother-in-law. Now, I want to be sensitive here, and I want to be sensitive to some of you guys, okay? Because I know there's many of you guys that are here that, you know, um, you're divorced, you remarried, and I understand that, and I don't mean to be insensitive in this one subject. Um, listen, it takes two to tango, right? It takes two. And here's the thing, and I understand where you're at and you're remurred, but the woman you are with ought to be the woman you will be with for the rest of your life. Be faithful. On godly friends are a bad influence. Drugs and the abuse of alcohol is a bad influence. And here's the number one killer of marriages. You ready? Porn. Porn. It's killing marriages left and right. You know how many people I have in my office? How many couples I'll have in my office throughout the year? You know what their number one problem is? Porn. Because men can't seem to shut off the computer. Because men can't seem to put away their phones. Because godly men can't seem to crucify the flesh. Now, I know that gets hard talking about that now, and I know there's some toes probably being stepped on, but men, it's time to make a change, and it starts with me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Joshua said. Remember? Two more real quick. Number four, a godly husband loves his wife by understanding her. I won't have you turn there, but you have your notes. But 1 Peter 3, 7 tells us, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. The word understanding means to come to understand. It means to perceive or to comprehend. You've heard of the book that's out. That um, And I can't remember the author's name, but I remember the book. And it says, everything I've learned about women, about being married and understanding my wife. When you open up the book, every page is blank. (laughs) (laughs) I'm still learning. 
And so are some of y'all been married 50 something years. <laughs> Bill and D, you guys celebrate how many years coming up in two months? 53 years. Yes. <laughs> That's for D all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and all the wives said, right? <laughs> right? But a godly husband loves his wife by understanding her, by perceiving and comprehending everything you, about your wife. Listen, we must understand our wives and know what their needs are, what their fears are, their feelings, their hopes, what makes them anxious, what causes them joy. Men, let me encourage you talk to your wives. Do you know what their favorite color is? Do you know what their favorite flower is? Do you know what their favorite food is? Do you understand what causes them fear at home? Do you understand what causes them anxiety? Do you know what their hopes are for the future? Husbands, how well do you know your wife? And then, <laughs> oh man. It's 20 till. Just give me two more. I'm going to just run through these real fast, okay? A godly husband loves his wife by respecting her. Notice in that same text, he says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor. The word honor there means respect. And the word respect means to, in the, in the way we respect something, someone in the way how we treat them. When we respect someone, we admire them and treat them well. We show respect by being polite and kind. I gave you five ways that you disrespect your wife and five ways to show respect to your wife. Guys, fill this in because this will help you. Five ways you disrespect your wife. Number one, when you show other women attention. When you shower other women with attention, please, men, be careful. Don't do that. Now, there's nothing wrong with, yes, being kind and greeting people. But if you're that guy that's showering another woman with attention and you give none to your wife, that's a no-no. And let me just say this. I'm very cautious to shower any woman with attention. Very cautious very cautious. Guys, the devil is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he came to devour. And you get your eyes, which is number two, gawking at other women. Oh, he knows. He knows how to push your buttons. And guys, you want to disrespect your wife? Start looking at other women. Number three, making big decisions without talking about them with her. Some guys, I, I got to be honest, I've heard guys say this, well, I'm the man of the house, I make all the decisions. You probably won't be married long. You probably don't have a happy marriage. But men, we are to make decisions with our wives. We are to be married to our wives and we raise our family and we have a home with our wives. We must talk with our wives and make decisions with our wives. I'll, I'll be honest with you. My wife has kept me from making some dumb, dumb decisions. No, no, no. You said that for you, right? Not for me. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> but my wife has, she's smart and she's wise. And I've learned take everything to Dina because she's smart. But seriously, we should make decisions together. Number four, withholding affection. One way in which you disrespect your wife is when you withhold affection from your wife, like holding her hand, giving her hugs, showing her some type of physical affection. And then finally, the last one, and this one's a big one, being distracted during conversation. How many of you men, let's be honest, have your wives tried talking to you something that was on their heart? And to you, you're like, I don't understand why she's telling me that because it's not really that important right now. 
because you're so consumed with watching something on YouTube. Okay. Four of you are being honest. I'll pray for the rest of you. <laughs> How many of you wives have men who will... I was just kidding. <laughs> Being distracted during conversation disrespects your wife. Here's five ways to show respect to your wife, guys. Number one, remind her that she is the only one for you. Listen to me. You've heard me say this before. My wife is a beautiful, gorgeous woman, and to me, she is the most beautiful woman in my life. She's the most beautiful woman I hope I'm saying this proper English. She's the most beautiful woman among all women in this building. To me. To you, your wife is the best looking woman among all the women in this building today. Do you get what I'm saying? To you, your wife is the best looking thing anywhere. Let her know it. My wife gets embarrassed all the time. I'll tell her, honey, you should have been a model. Should have been a model. She's like, stop it. And then she walks away. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She doesn't do it. She doesn't do it. <laughs> she doesn't do that. <laughs> she's, she's, she's right back there. <laughs> I got to say all this stuff now because she's right there. So. But remind her why you fell in love with her. Let her know. Tell her what she means to you. Number two, big one. Another big way to respect your wife. Help at home. Help her do the housework. Help her with the children. I heard this woman laugh <laughs> over in that section. Help at home, men. Listen, this is a big one, guys. Listen, you got to get off that bandwagon that you work hard all day long and you come home and the house better be cleaned and it's the woman's job to do the, all the ironing, the vacuuming, the dishes and doing the kids and all that, that and you are coming home to your castle. Listen, you are wrong. Listen, I promise you this is long. I, I, honest. I would rather go out and bust my back out in the world then have to raise children at home. And all the real dads said, we know, we know. Listen, taking care of kids is hard. We got three at home. And when my wife goes somewhere, it's not 10 minutes later, I'm texting her pictures. <laughs> when are you coming home? <laughs> oh, but seriously, help at home. I love, you know, this is going to sound weird. I love doing dishes. We got a dishwasher, but I hand wash dishes. I love it. I hand wash dishes all the time. I just love it. It doesn't bother me. I'll vacuum. I vacuum the floor. I, I make the bed. I clean the living room. I pick up toys. But I help my wife. Why? Because I want to show my wife respect. And I know, listen, taking care of kids is hard. Hard and all mom said. Amen. Yeah, there you, man, it should have been a lot, but that was good. That was, amen. But gentlemen, listen to me. Help your wife at home. You think that because you work all day long at a hard job, don't think that your wife don't work hard all day long taking care of kids. Now, I will say wives, don't rely on your husband to come home and do all the work for you, but you guys work it together. Amen. Here's a third way. Make time for her. Make time for your wife. Take your wife on a date. Take her out. Go to Texas Roadhouse. I love Roadhouse. Amen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, meat and potatoes. <laughs> but more importantly, take her where she wants to go. <laughs> like Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> my wife back there she's like mm -hmm. or texas longhorns we can't afford that place so we go to texas roadhouse number four pursue her i know i'm going a little bit late but hang with me guys pursue her show her love and affection 
pursue her. Now, I've heard guys say this. Now, listen to me. Pursue your wife. When was the last time, guys, you just surprised your wife with flowers? Just honestly. Man, don't say it, but you, I know a lot of y'all are going to be like, thanks, pastor, for getting me in trouble. <laughs> but here's the thing. I've heard guys say, I don't do what, we don't waste money on flowers. We don't waste money on candy. Man, waste your money. All right, your wife may not, your wife, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Amen. See, here's the thing. Your wife may go, oh, I don't do flowers. Listen, that may be so. But when your husband buys you flowers, come on, come on. If he bought you a big old diamond, oh, I'm not into that, right? (laughs) It's not the cost of the gift, it's the heart behind it. (laughs) Okay, diamonds, get them diamonds. No, seriously, but when was the last time you bought them? What's your wife's favorite candy? My wife's is dark chocolate. She loves Dove dark chocolate. And I'll surprise her. I'll call Dylan's up. I'll be here at the church and, you know, just after we've had a bad fight. And I'll be, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But I'll be thinking of my wife. I'll be here and I'll call up Dylan's. Hey, can you, uh, dozen flowers, dozen roses, dozen roses. Send them to my wife. Here, say this. I can't remember. It was just the other week and I said, or last month, and I said something about, you're the only one for me, honey bunny, whatever, something silly, you know. And, of course, you get home, and she's like, oh, you shouldn't have a dozen roses. Oh, you wasted the money, but thank you. <laughs> it pays off in the end. <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> engage her here's the last one engage her in conversation and what i mean by that is get alone with your wife and talk just take her by yourself T- take her in the bedroom and sit on the bed and say honey how was your day what's on your mind talk to your wife notice the warning that paul that peter gives excuse me at the end of our text when he says Honor, give honor to the wife as the weaker vessel and as being heirs together, the grace of life, that your what? Prayers may not be hindered. Could it be men that a lot of our prayers go unanswered because we're not treating our wives right? And then lastly, number six, a godly husband loves his wife by being gentle towards her. And I'll close with this. In our text in Colossians chapter number three, verse 19, Paul again says, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. The word bitter in the Greek means to have bitter resentment or hatred towards someone. It means to be embittered, embittered. Here's words. You look up the word embittered because I was like, well, what does that truly mean to be embittered towards my wife? So the words that relate to embittered, check these out. They are angry, cruel, harsh, irritated, mad, rough, vicious, cutting, and sarcastic. Paul said, love your wife and don't be embittered towards them. Don't be harsh or cruel or irritated or rough or vicious or cutting or sarcastic towards your wife. Why? Because those are all the marks of an ungodly husband and you are not an ungodly husband, but you are a godly husband. Amen? Amen. So what is the opposite of being embittered? The antonyms for the word embittered are these, caring, forgiving, gentle, kind, sweet, sympathetic, tender, and warm. Men, these are what we ought to be towards our wives. Caring and forgiving, gentle, sympathetic, tender, and warm. And let me just say this before I... This is not in my notes, but can I just, because this I thought about this as I was getting this together, but I want you to notice something, and if you're still in Ephesians, just real quick, and I'll close with this, but in Ephesians 5, when, when, when the Bible says, husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church, gave himself for her, that he might what? And the word is sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. You understand that when Christ died for us, when we were born again, we were sanctified at that very moment. We were set apart as children of God. We were adopted by God through Jesus Christ and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. But you and I, 
We're sanctified at that very moment. But at that moment, we are also in a process of sanctification. Which means that we are constantly growing as believers. We are constantly being transformed into the image of Christ. Why do I say that? Think about this. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify. Here's the thing, men. We ought to love our wives and remember that they are in a sanctifying process. Which means we must be patient and sympathetic and tender and warm and gentle and forgiving and caring and kind and sweet. Amen. A lot of times we have this mentality, well, my wife ought to be this and she ought to be that and she ought to be this and she ought to be that. Well, maybe she's saying the same thing about you. We must not be embittered towards our wives. Well, why aren't you? Why aren't you? Why aren't you? Why aren't you? Listen, instead of tearing your wife down and shouting as, why aren't they? Why don't you start shouting and saying, I am so glad you are and fill in the blank. Now, in closing, you can close your Bibles that through the years, as I said, I've had Lots of guys in my office and, and uh, lots of ladies, couples together in my office and uh, counseling them in marriage. And, and I went through some of these things and the biggest things I'll talk about guys and, you know, what you need to be doing. And, and I'll, I'll have this one statement or these two statements that you'll maybe some guys you'll relate to this morning. And they'll say things like this, pastor, that's not who I am. Or pastor... That's not how I'm made. Man, husbands, listen to me. It's time to make a change. That may not be who you are, but it's time to make a change. You say, Pastor, that's not me. I'm not that, you know, that way. I'm not designed to be caring and loving and all this and that and be sacrificial and this and that. That's not who I am. That's not how I'm made. Well, then you need to change. Remember when I said the beginning... To be a godly husband is going to take effort. It's going to take discipline, right? It's going to be hard to do, but we must do it. Why? Because an ungodly culture needs to see what a godly man is. And husbands, it's time to make a change. We must keep this verse ever before us, and that is, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Man, it's tough and it's hard. You say, but pastor, you don't know my wife. I don't need to know your wife. Pastor, you don't understand what my wife does or what she says or what she doesn't do. It doesn't matter. But pastor, you don't know how my wife treats me or this or that. It doesn't matter. God commanded us to love our wives. It's not a condition on performance, but it's conditioned on commandment. We don't love our wives because they perform a certain way. We love our wives because we are commanded to, because that's what God has called us to, to be the godly men we were chosen to be. Let's pray. Father, I know, Lord, this is hard message for so many of us, myself included, Lord because I'm still every day fighting the flesh. Every day I have to kick my pride to the curb. Every day, God, I must sacrifice myself because my flesh, my sinful nature, this body who is still in corruption wants its way, wants to do things its way wants its way and God every day I must say no and every day I must look to my wife who is that precious vessel whom you've given me and I must honor her and cherish her God help me to do that 
And as I'm saying these words, God, this is every prayer of every man here. Help us to treat the women whom you've given us the way you've called us to. Help us to be the godly husbands you've called us to be. Father, thank you. Thank you. We love you. We praise you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Lola, are you coming forward today? Amen. Lola, come on up here. I want to introduce to you a young lady whose name is Lola. I almost said Lola. Is Lola Watson. Josh, is your, yeah, come on up here. Stand next to your daughter. Y'all know Josh. Josh is our uh, husband to Christina. I always, we have a lot of Christines, Christinas, and I always make sure I get that right. They're the leaders of our nursery. Lola is one of their daughters. And Lola received Christ as her Lord and Savior. Isn't that awesome? Yep. And now Lola comes forward because she wants to follow the Lord in baptism. So isn't that awesome? So, and so come... March 21st, right there. She is going to be baptized, as well as I know there are some others of you that talked about baptism. I need you to get with me, okay? I need to talk to you. And so if you are an individual that has received Christ, you've been born again, and you want to follow the Lord in baptism and show the world that you are a follower of Jesus Christ, please get a hold of me. You can call the church. You can text me. You can call my phone, whichever email, however you want to do it. You can get with me right after service. Say, Pastor, we need to talk. I'd love to get baptized. So do that um, before this day comes up and so we can get that planned and get that together. So are you excited for Lola? Amen. God bless you. Go be seated. It's always awesome seeing teenagers give their life to Jesus Christ, and I am excited for that. So here's what we're going to do. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to be dismissed. We have two young men, good-looking single men. And mom said, no, not yet, Pastor. They're standing at the back door with offering baskets. And if you would please help out, this offering that we're doing now goes to the corporate office of the cadets that helps the ministry keep going. And um, if you'd like to give by check, you can just make it out to the church. And then Joe, our treasurer, will then write one check to them and uh, get it to the main office that way. So again, uh, uh, my apologies in one moment, one aspect of keeping you a little bit late. I don't think we've ever been past 12 o'clock in a long time, but um, uh, I was glad we all came to God's house today. Amen. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're here. And then next Sunday, I'm going to be talking to you dads. So I'll be talking to fathers. And then I know you're probably going, good gravy. When's he going to be done with us? That's the last message. Okay. And then I'll be talking to the women uh, for three sermons, women, wives, and mothers on the next three, and then we'll move on. And I believe that I'm going to be going to the Gospel of John. I think I'm going to do a series and just preach through the whole Gospel of the book of John. So, amen? We'll be there for five years, you know. It'll be some, one of those things. But uh, <laughs> So, anyways, um, be prepared for that. Um, there's something else we're supposed to be praying for, but I can't remember what it is. If you would, continue to pray for our church. Continue to pray for those who are sick. Now, there's nobody sick that I'm aware of, but for people that may be sick in, your, in our town, that people that you may know, pray for them. Pray for our government. Pray for our President Biden. Pray for his cabinet. Pray for everyone to be saved, that they would repent and come to Christ. Uh, that's what they need, is they need Jesus. Amen. Amen. So again, I, I hope and pray that you can say it's been good to be in God's house today. Let's dismiss in prayer. And Brother Jerry, if you would, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?